Imagine this, it's 60,000 years ago and the world is a wild, untamed place. The sun dips below the horizon, casting a golden glow over a rugged valley in what we now call the Middle East. A small band of early humans, their faces weathered by wind and sun, huddle around a crackling fire. Their eyes gleam with curiosity as they spot another group approaching through the twilight. Strangers with broader brows, stockier builds, and an air of familiarity at difference. These are not enemies, nor are they quite kin. They are Neanderthals, and this moment of meeting will change the course of human history forever. Welcome to a journey back to prehistoric times, where our ancestors didn't just survive, they thrive by mingling with other human-like species. This isn't just a story of survival, it's a tale of connection, adaptation, and a legacy that lives in our DNA today. Stick with me as we unravel how these ancient encounters shaped who we are, why we're the only humans left, and what secrets our genes still whisper about a time when we weren't alone. Let's dive into the deep past. Trust me, you won't want to miss a second of this. Picture a world where humans weren't the only players on the stage. Around 100,000 years ago, Eurasia was a mosaic of hominin species, different branches of the human family tree, each with unique traits honed by their environments. Our ancestors, Homo sapiens, were just one group among many, wandering out of Africa into a land already claimed by others. Among them were the Neanderthals, stocky and strong, with heavy brow ridges and brains as big as ours, and the mysterious Denisovans, known only from a handful of bones, but with a genetic footprint that echoes across continents. This wasn't a lonely planet. It was a bustling prehistoric crossroads where different hominins met, traded, and sometimes loved. These encounters weren't just fleeting moments. They left a mark on our species, one we can trace through the science of genetics. Today, we'll explore how these meetings happened, what they meant for our survival, and why were the last hominins standing? My take? These other species weren't just neighbors, they were partners in our evolutionary success, giving us the tools to conquer new lands and challenges. Let's start with the Neanderthals, the hominins we know best. Imagine a group of them trudging through a snowy forest in what's now Germany, 50,000 years ago. Their short, muscular bodies are wrapped in furs, their faces framed by prominent brows and wide noses, built for cold, dry air. They're not the brutish cavemen of old cartoons. These folks controlled fire, crafted sharp stone tools, and even made jewelry from eagle talons. They cared for their sick and buried their dead. Signs of a complex social world not so different from our own. The Anderthal fossils tell a story of a people who thrived across a vast range, from the cliffs of Portugal to the mountains of Siberia, from 450,000 to about 40,000 years ago. One of the oldest sites, the Cima de los Huesos in Spain, holds bones from nearly half a million years ago, a chilling, pit of bones where early Neanderthals left their dead. Fast forward to 40,000 years ago, and their traces linger in caves across Western Europe right up until they vanished. What fascinates me is how close we were to them. Our ancestors saw Neanderthals not as others, but as kin close enough to share campfires and yes, to start families. Genetic evidence, like the 2010 sequencing of a Neanderthal genome from a Croatian cave, shows that modern humans of European and East Asian descent carry 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA. That's not just a quirk, it's proof of intimate connections that happened multiple times, likely as our ancestors moved through the Middle East and Europe. Take the story of a man from Siberia, 45,000 years ago. His femur, dug up by scientists, held Neanderthal DNA segments longer than those in modern humans, suggesting his Neanderthal ancestor lived just a few generations back. 
maybe 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. Or consider a jawbone from Romania, 40,000 years old, with 6 to 9% Neanderthal DNA, hinting at a great-grandparent who was Neanderthal. These weren't one-off flings, they were repeated encounters that wove Neanderthal genes into our story. Now, let's shift to a colder, harsher place, the Denisova Cave in Siberia, 52,000 years ago. A biting wind howls outside as a small group gathers inside, their faces lit by flickering flames. Among them is a child, her pinky bone later found by archaeologists in 2008. That tiny bone revealed a bombshell. She wasn't Neanderthal or Homo sapiens. She was something else, a Denisovan a hominin we didn't even know existed until her DNA was sequenced. The Denisovans are like ghosts in our family tree. We have just seven fossil fragments, teeth, a pinky, a sliver of bone, a piece of skull cap, and a jaw bone from Tibet dated to 160,000 years ago. Without a complete skeleton, we can't even give them a proper scientific name. Yet their genetic legacy is vivid, especially in East Asia, South Asia, and Melanesia where some populations carry up to 6% Denisovan DNA. Imagine that, a people we barely know physically, yet their genes pulse through millions today. What's wild is how different their story is from the Neanderthals. Their mitochondrial DNA suggests a common ancestor with us from a million years ago, but their nuclear DNA is closer to ours, hinting they mingled with other hominins, maybe Homo erectus. Multiple interbreeding events with at least three Denisovan groups left traces in modern humans, showing they were as connected to our ancestors as Neanderthals were. My take? The Denisovans were adapters supreme, thriving in extreme places like the Tibetan Plateau, and they gifted us traits that let us follow in their footsteps. So what did these ancient hookups mean for us? Picture a Homo sapiens band crossing a sun-scorched plain in Asia, their skin burning under the relentless sun. Thanks to Neanderthals, some carried a gene called HYAL2, which helped their skin repair after UVB exposure, a lifesaver in harsh climates. Or imagine a group climbing the Tibetan plateau, gasping in thin air, a Denisovan gene EPAS1 boosted their hemoglobin, letting them thrive at high altitudes where others would falter. These are examples of adaptive introgression, genes from one species jumping to another and sticking around because they're useful. Neanderthals also gave us STAT2, a gene that supercharges our immune system's response to viruses, a trait absent in sub-Saharan Africans who never met Neanderthals. But not all gifts were perfect. A Neanderthal gene for fast blood clotting, once a boon for surviving injuries, now raises the risk of blood clots in modern times. Evolution's a trade-off, and these ancient genes show both the power and the peril of our mixed heritage. What strikes me is how these encounters weren't just about survival, they were about transformation. Our ancestors didn't outcompete Neanderthals or Denisovans. They collaborated in a way, blending their strengths with ours. This wasn't a conquest, but a partnership, one that gave us the edge to spread across the globe. Without these other hominins, would we have made it? I'm not so sure. Now, the big question. Why are we the only hominins left? Picture a Neanderthal group in Europe 44,000 years ago, shivering through a brutal cold snap. The climate was turning against them, with icy winds and shrinking forests fragmenting their habitats. Some researchers think these harsh conditions thin their numbers, making them vulnerable. Add to that the arrival of Homo sapiens, not with spears but with sheer numbers, spreading from Africa and filling the land. There's no evidence of violence between us and Neanderthals just coexistence in, well, romance. But their small populations and possible inbreeding 
may have limited their genetic diversity, making them less adaptable to change. Denisovans likely face similar pressures, though their sparse fossil record leaves us guessing. Were they pushed out by climate, competition, or just bad luck? We don't know, but their absence haunts the prehistoric landscape. My perspective is that our success wasn't about being better. Homo sapiens weren't inherently superior. We were lucky and adaptable, boosted by the genes we borrowed. Neanderthals and Denisovans weren't failures. They were pioneers whose legacies live in us. Their extinction wasn't our triumph, but a narrowing of the human story, leaving us to carry their torch alone. To make this real, let's fast forward to today. Meet Tenzin, a Tibetan mountaineer scaling the Himalayas. At 5,000 meters where oxygen is scarce, he moves with ease. His body adapted to the altitude thanks to that Denisovan e pass one gene. His ancestors thousands of years ago met Denisovans on these same plateaus, and their union gave Tenzin's people a genetic edge that persists. Or consider Maria, a nurse in Sweden who fights off a viral infection faster than expected. That Neanderthal STAT2 gene in her DNA, inherited from ancient encounters in Europe, might be why. These stories aren't just science, they're human. They show how prehistoric mingling shapes lives today, from mountaintops to hospitals. I've always found it humbling to think that part of what makes us resilient comes from people we'll never meet, whose bones lie buried in caves we may never find. It's a reminder that our story is a shared one, woven from countless threads of the past. As we stand alone as the last hominins, let's not forget the others who walked with us. Neanderthals and Denisovans didn't just vanish, they became part of us. Their genes a silent testament to a time when humanity was a chorus, not a solo act. Their gifts helped us conquer mountains, fight diseases, and heal from the sun's harsh rays. Our survival is their legacy, a story of connection that stretches across millennia. So, what's the lesson? We thrive when we embrace difference, when we learn from those who aren't quite like us. In prehistoric times, our ancestors didn't shun the other. They joined with them, and that made all the difference. Today, as we face new challenges, let's remember that our strength lies in unity, in blending our stories to build a future as resilient as our past. Thanks for joining me in this dive into deep time. Subscribe for more, and let's keep exploring the roots of who we are.